Welcome to the Referrals Podcast, the show designed to help everyone from the solopreneur to the Fortune 500 company win the referral game. If you want to build a company with an army of ambassadors and raving fans who speak highly of you and refer you willingly, you are in the right place. Let's meet your hosts, Chris Angel and Michael Mayer. Welcome back, everybody. It's another episode of the Referrals Podcast. I'm your co-host, Chris Angel, here with your host, as always, Michael J. Mayer. Hello, sir. Woohoo! I'm excited Woo-hoo! about today. I know, this Appreciate. is pretty sweet. Um, there was a time we had, uh, early on in the podcast, we had Bob Berg on and I was a little starstruck. Uh, today we have Jason, or Jason, I have a friend from uh, my high school days named Jason Jance, isn't that funny? Uh, John Jance, Duct Tape Marketing. John, I bought your book years ago on, uh, I have it on my Kindle um, and Michael's got some other books there on his desktop. Uh, welcome to the show, John. Well, thanks for having me. I, you know, I'm a little jealous. I have my own show and uh, I, I need to have like two people. <laughs> yes. This is awesome. Power numbers. Oh, yeah. You're so good. You can carry it on your own. Me, you I need all the help I can get. So it's like, it's really Chris's show, like 90%, 10%. I go like this. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Right. Yeah. You're a great <laughs> nodder. Great at nodding. So I have to tell you, I'm excited about today for a lot of reasons. And, uh, you know, duct tape marketing, one of the, you know, one of the, the, the greatest small business marketing books of all time. I'm not exaggerating at all. Uh, the proof is in the numbers. The proof is in the success. It's, it's a phenomenal book. Um, you know, it, but I have to tell you that, that this probably had more of an impact on me, uh, the referral engine, um, because of, and in fact, I'm going to read from it a little bit, uh, some things that I've highlighted over the years and, and implemented and done. But one of the reasons that I'm so excited about that, this is because I was there in the beginning. I don't even know if John knows or remembers this or cares quite honestly. I mean, it's like, but I will tell you that there was this fledgling real estate agent slash teacher who had just gotten into real estate. I was about ready to quit real estate. Uh, I, I had just taken a client through the process and I threw him a house ring party. I got 11 referrals and like all, I did the other way, the cold calling, the door knocking, the expires, the FISBO, the open house, the, the, the interrupting strangers, distracting people type of processes. And I knew that wasn't for me. I was like, I'm out of here. And then I got the referrals from, uh, from, these, these, the, from this party and it felt great. It was awesome. I started to think, you know what, I can do this. So all of a sudden, my reticular activating system, my brain was in tune with referrals, like everything referrals, everything repeat, customer service. And so I just happened to be, I don't know what I was doing. And I might've been at the library and uh, I saw an invitation to a seminar at the Shawnee Library. I mean, there's like the Johnson County Library is this guy, and then the Shawnee Library, right? I liked it because nobody was there, you know? And so I, I, I registered for the, for the seminar uh, by this guy named John Jantz, and I, I went and I sat in there, I took like 11 pages of notes, no joke, and uh, I ended up buying your whole thing. Like everything you had, I just bought. I was just like, give it to me. It was the referral flood, John. Yeah. Do you remember the, the referral flood is John Jansen's first book. And I'll tell you what, I got to have you sign it because I think it's worth a million dollars. It was in a three ring binder. It had a great slip in and you open it up and it was the referral flood. And it talked about the systems about developing your referral business. And I will tell you, like I had that on my desk for several weeks after that and, and worked from it and took the ideas from it. And uh, who knows how many of those ideas are actually in 7L, you know? I mean, what it was is, is your ideas were planted on very fertile ground and, uh, and grew from there. Um, so, so very much appreciated way back then. And then I've devoured, I've become your, your, your fan ever since then. And, you know, I devoured duct tape marketing, devour the referral engine, and I can't wait to devour your next book, which we'll talk about later. That's, I, I do actually remember that, of course. You do not. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> the guy spoke to 100,000 people. I remember Mike Mayer, Michael Mayer. He was in the front row. Yeah. Well, I remember the product. 
Um, how's that? Uh, the referral flood, which was, was as you said, it was, a, it was really the first thing I sold online, um, you know, 20 ish years ago. Wow. Uh, and it was right at the infancy of when people were actually, you know, buying products that way. And I love when I go speak to a lot of groups today and, and I'm sort of kind of doing the, a little bit of the nostalgia tour, you know, in some <laughs> cases. And so I'm, you know, I'm telling people, you know, we used to do marketing without the internet guys. And they're all like, what? Huh? Like, huh? It's like how? How do people buy without the internet? Can't even imagine it. And, you know, people would come on my website, um, fill out an order form, you know, I, you know, for a free, a free report, which I would mail to them, which they would cut out a coupon and send back to me. And then I would mail the three ring binder. The whole process took about eight weeks. Uh, so <laughs> we've come Man, along. I'm glad I went to the seminar then. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> That's but, uh, yeah, we, we've come a long way, haven't we? Yes, we have. We have. <laughs> Have, for those that aren't familiar with the referral engine or duct tape marketing, like walk me through some of the inspirations behind those books. Yeah. So particularly duct tape marketing, I mean, um, in a lot of ways, um, it, it was a book, but it was something I'd been doing for years. I mean, it was really, a, um, you know, a distillation of my approach to marketing for small business. And, you know, I started like a lot of people that, uh, you know, start a business and I said, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to, you know, I can sell some work and I'll do this work for this client, this work for that client and, you know, kind of making it up every time and, uh, you know, realize that I loved working with small business owners, but it can be kind of challenging. Uh, um, you know, they have the same problems uh, and, and challenges as much larger organizations, but certainly never the same budgets or even mm -hmm. pension spans. <laughs> and so... Right. So I said, you know what I need to do is I need to create a, a, a systematic approach to marketing where I can walk in and say, here's what I'm going to do. Here's what you're going to do. Here's what it's going to cost. Here's the results we hope to get, you know, do you want it or not? Um, and that, you know, kind of turning marketing into a product uh, or a system uh, really kind of was the genesis of duct tape marketing. I figured, hey, if I'm going to make this a product, I have to call it something. Mm -hmm. um, and so I called it duct tape marketing. So I was actually selling duct tape marketing um, as a process before there was really a book. And, uh, and so it turned into uh, the book, duct tape marketing, because the, some strange people name. like the name. Oh, yeah. are you kidding? It's a great, Such a great name. name. What, what made you decide to do duct tape marketing? I, 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 it's brilliant. And it, I mean, it's so funny as we talk now about how websites are quote unquote sticky or you want your marketing sticky. You know, there's nothing stickier than duct tape. And I just wonder if some of that vernacular came from, from duct tape marketing, you know, I, I, I well, I, I, I don't, I won't claim to that, that yeah. at all. Well, I will, I will for you. So, <laughs> but, but the reason I chose that name is, as I said, I, my company was actually called Jans Communications. Um, and so if I was going to create this thing, you know, that, that was sort of productizing marketing, you know, I felt like I had to give it a brandy, you know, name. Right. Um, and, I, you know, to me, it just felt like the perfect metaphor for what it's like to run a small business in a lot of cases. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's simple, it's effective, it's affordable, <laughs> you know, it always works, um, you know. And, and so, you know, I just, I, I, gave, I don't, you know, I, I I'd like to say I spent thousands and thousands of dollars on research. I really just kind of want to say that to call it. Um, and, and it did, you know, no pun intended. It, it really stuck and it became the name of my book, my podcast, my website, actually my business um, completely. So it became referable. I'll tell you uh, just a recent example is uh, I was at a baseball, um, baseball practice. I, I do a lot with baseball. My son does a lot with baseball. One of the players had a wart. Well, you know, they had just come out with this home remedy thing and they were talking about if you put duct tape on the wart and leave it there three or four days, then then it'll it'll get rid of the wart. And so I was telling them this and it actually made me think of you, which mm. is, you know, now every time I use duct tape, I'm not sure if I thank you. But it was interesting is is the guy who's who's the, the father of the son that we were working on with the duct tape is actually a business consultant. And I was going, you know, speak, we had to talk about something. We were putting duct tape on this kid's thumb, you know? And, and so it was just like, have you read duct tape marketing? And he was like, no, I haven't read it. And I go, oh my God, you got to get that, you know? And so it turned into a referable moment just because we were using uh, duct tape. So I just thought that was- uh, Well, and that, I mean, that's a, you know, referable. one of the principles I suppose of referability is that, you know, you give somebody something to talk about. Um, right. I, I, 
you, you got to deliver the goods, but you've also got to figure out a way to kind of amplify that talkability. Yeah, I think you called it like core talkability differentiation or something like that. And what's so funny is I didn't know if that, if I got that from you or not, but I'm always talking about talk about your business has to have a talk about, you know, your, your system has to have a talk about, you have to have a talk about what are people talking about when they talk about you and your business. And, uh, and uh, I actually just went back and refreshed through the books and, and saw in the referral engine, it said core talk, talk, uh, core talkability differentiation, right? Yeah. You, you're so you're, you're scientific and smart. And I just, how about a talk about, right? Which actually is not even like a word or anything else. I just made it up. So yeah. well, especially today, I mean, there's so many ways people can share, you know, that's one of the keys is get, get people sharing something. That's right. What was it that had you uh, write referral engine? I mean, coming off of such a success like duct tape marketing, like why write another book and, and how, why referrals and well, you know, it, it probably came down to the fact that, and, and, and actually this, I think, is in the introduction um, of, of the book itself, is that, you know, in all the work that I've done with small business owners and all the speaking I do with small business owners, you know, I, I constantly ask them, you know, what's, what is the number one way that you get business? Hmm. Um, and for most small businesses, still true today, it's probably 70% word of mouth. It's referral. I mean, that is whether they're, you know, doing anything about it or not, you yeah. know, it's another question, but that is ultimately how they get their business. And so, uh, you know, I just thought it was kind of insane that people would admit, you know, we 70, 75% of our business comes by way of word of mouth or referrals, but we do absolutely nothing <laughs> to stimulate them or to amplify our referability. Um, mm -hmm. So to me, it just felt like, well, maybe I ought to go really deep in that one topic uh, because of that. Yeah. So and good. there were, uh, and, and help me here with the, the four C's to refer, and, and just so you know, is, is that, um, you know, I'm, I'm deep into the referral world, right? Repeat and referral is everything to me. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, I believe that all roads of marketing lead to referrals. You know, I really believe that the end, of, I believe that the purpose of your business is to, to have a referable business. The reason you have a business is to have a referable business. Otherwise, what are you doing? And right. you talk about the referability in, in the referral engine. I'm totally going from memory here. I probably, it, was, it was content, context, something, and then community. And the, C, the other C was real uh, connection. Connection and community. And under connection, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, it'll take me two seconds. Hopefully everybody can look. So today there is a touch of irony to the idea of connection as a business principle. The more connected we become through technology, the more we long for real connections involving live human interactions. And then you go into talking about the 1982 book Megatrends, where it talks about high tech, high touch for every high tech advance we have, we typically find a high touch or human advance. And, uh, you know, it, 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 that, that, listen, that helped create the entire 7L system, to be honest with you, because that's where events came in and, and everything we, we teach about events and, and the power of events. Um, that was cutting edge too. That was 2010. You wrote that, right? That's right. I mean, I feel like people just now are starting 2019 are starting to feel like they're wanting the human connection piece. It, people are craving real yeah, relationships, yeah. right? I think it's actually gotten worse um, yeah. is what yeah. happened, you know, because yeah. we've, you know, we've actually gotten more disconnected in a lot of ways because of social media. Yeah, um, yeah. And, and I think that, so, you know, I, I believe that it felt like it was coming, you know, even then, you know, 2010, but I think it's just amplified. Um, and, and I think that the good news is I, I see a turnaround uh, a little bit happening too. I see people, you know, disconnecting from social media, you mm -hmm. know, changing yeah. their behaviors around and, and, you know, using some of the technology in some ways as a way to create better person to person connections. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 100%. I, I, you're right. We're seeing it where people are craving uh, live interaction and real people more than in fact, being real being authentic uh, is more attractive than ever before. And you would have thought that maybe with social media, it would have conquered some of that. But, but what, it, I mean, Facebook is fake book. You know, <laughs> all you see is the good stuff, you know, uh, or you see somebody go off the deep end with a, a complaint or, or some divisive comment. 
but it's 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 such a limited view of what people really are and um it's it's been amazing to see uh how you're for you have four c's of referability i have three c's of referability they're they're similar and different um your four c's are content context uh connection and community mine are uh character competence and communication right but it is amazing how uh how they how they fit together and um, what, what did you discover? Like, how did people implement that? Like, how did, and, and this is, you know, we want to, we want when with referrals podcast, it's like, you know, we can, we can talk about referrals all day long, but, but you know, how do they orchestrate it? How, how do they amplify it? Uh, using your words, how do they get, you know, how did the business owners who read referral engine or followed your consulting get more referrals? Well, the, the biggest thing, I mean, let, let, let's back up a little bit. And, and if you go on Amazon um, and look at uh, the referral engine and find the, uh, the uh, few one and two star reviews of the book, uh, <laughs> wow. they go on. Is, you're the first author in the history of the world of this show who has asked us to go and find the one or two star ratings. I just want you to know that. That's awesome. So there are a handful and they all have a constant theme. Well, when is this book going to get around to talking about referrals? Because quite frankly, <laughs> quite frankly, I spend a significant amount of time talking about the fact that the way to get more referrals first and foremost is to be more referable. Mm -hmm. and you can't, you know, you can't trick people into referring you, you know? No. No. Um, and so, so that's, you know, that's step one, but where the companies that, you know, you, you go and you look and they've got five star reviews and their customers love them. Well, they're not doing anything to embrace and build that community. So a yeah. I mean, really easy thing is the people that are already referring you, go hug them, <laughs> go bring them into a room, bring them together, introduce them to each other, do events for them, <laughs> give them special things. Because those people who are now giving you maybe two referrals are now going to give you 10 because they're already on board. You know, they just need a little bit of recognition. They just need a little bit of Hey, I'm on the A team, um, and so build kind of your champion team. That's 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 rule number one. I mean, that's just so easy <laughs> to do um, if you're already getting referrals. I mean, that can three x, four x your referrals really without much activity. Wow. Yeah, we have that equation in the in the generosity generation or the seven L system, which is like plus like equals two loves. Yeah. Right. When when you get when you get your ambassadors or champions together, the A team, if you will then what happens is, is somebody that likes you is talking to someone who likes you. And when they do that, they are both, when they walk away, they are emboldened and empowered to refer you even more because of social proof. There's, oh my gosh, somebody else loves Michael, so that it, it's okay to love Michael. Somebody else loves John, it's okay to love John. Somebody else loves Chris, it's okay to love John or Chris. And, and so they, they are, there's power to that. That's more than just one plus one. It really is one plus one equals 11 uh, in that case. Yeah, no, no question. I mean, one of my favorite things to do when I was first getting started was to just, you know, once a quarter have, you know, have lunch and invite four or five clients, no agenda, no selling, no purpose other than, Hey, I think you people ought to meet each other. Um, and you're absolutely right. You know, what came out of that was referrals. <laughs> You know, with without without me opening my mouth. <laughs> I was going to say, did you ask for them? No. Well, I, I did open my mouth, but it was really just to eat. Yeah, and you weren't asking for referrals. You literally sat there and watched them refer you in front of you and didn't interrupt them. You know, that's the that's the number one law of referrals is don't interrupt people who are referring you. <laughs> that, that, you know, it, it's like let them talk, let them talk. So I love I love that I love that and. So what's interesting is, is that um, it, it's so funny. You go to the one or two star reviews on Amazon and you'll find it's like, when are you going to talk about getting, and you're just like, those are the ones who just don't, they're the ones who have mastered sales skills, John. Those are the ones who have, it's like, give me the script right. for getting referrals. What's, what's the script? And it's like, all right, here's the script. And script is just short for prescription. And the prescription is, you know what? Be referable. Like be more referable. Be honest and truthful in your dealing. Treat people with dignity and, and 
you know, be good at what you're doing, be great at what you're doing, and, and be good at communication. Be able to communicate with people in a way that allows them to solve their problems, right? And it, it's, uh, it's, it's so funny, but great point. So, I mean, but so, so the obvious to me is, like I said, the community, the people that are referring you, um, <clears throat> but there's also a lot of little things that, that become a part of just the staying top of mind. Um, and that's another thing, a lot of, you know, you've got this customer, they love you, but hey, they've got a life. They're mm -hmm. going on, they got stuff, they got their own problems, stuff. So you also want to, and again, every business is different, but you want to start thinking, what are some ways that I could put something back in, you know, in front of them? Goofy things like send a hundred dollar gift certificate, you know, that says hundred dollars off our service. Plus, if you want to give this to a friend or a neighbor, they'll get a hundred off and, you know, you'll be, it'll be because of you. And, um, you know, those kinds of things are really easy to put in place and just send out once a quarter so that, because, you know, referrals a lot of times, I mean, you can go to people all day long and say, know anybody who needs what I do. Yeah. Uh, and they'll go, uh, I don't, you know, <laughs> not really. Um, but if they've got that, you know, that gift certificate sitting right there on their desk and their golf buddy comes in and says, boy, I got this problem with that. And it's like, oh, hey, you know what? I've got this tangible thing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, staying top of mind, you know, is, is certainly a, a key to that as well. One other element we haven't really touched on um, too, and, and a lot of, this is where I think a lot of people drop the ball is, um, you have to really do a lot of education. Um, your, your champions and your referral sources who love you want to send you all kinds of business, mm -hmm. but a lot of times they don't necessarily know who or how. Um, and, and that's a really key ingredient as well. I mean, I always tell people, you need to be able to explicitly be able to you know, write in a paragraph, how would I spot your ideal client? Mm -hmm. you know, down to not only who they are, but what problem they're having, the types of things they might say that <laughs> would indicate that, boy, you know, they need what I have. Um, and, and a lot of times, you know, that's where, where people get a little bit of fear in that, like, oh, if I'm teaching people or telling people, am I assuming too much or am I begging for business? I mean, you've, you, I know you've heard all of, that, all of these, uh, these same things, hmm. but I think that if, if you've got something that you know, because you've seen over time has really helped people, <laughs> has really made their lives better, you know, then I, I think you're almost doing a disservice to the world if you don't allow those same people to bring that to their friends, neighbors, and colleagues. Working by referral is not some fairy tale world. It's real. I've seen it. And you can too. Invest in yourself by learning how to run your business by referral at Michael's upcoming live event. It will be a day filled with hands-on, how-to, low-to-no-cost strategies that you can implement in your business right away. Learn how to run a business by referral that not only feeds your family, but feeds your soul. Go to www.gengenevents.com today. That's www.gengenevents.com. 100%. Chris, did you have a question on that? No, no. Okay. I was just, I keep thinking about, uh, my mind is stuck in um, our social media conversation because <laughs> that's where I spend so much time. Um, uh, and I think that, and we don't have to go here yet, but I feel like um, part of the challenge of people feeling disconnected is, um, is then how I go, I personally go out uh, about my day. Like, how do I now operate in this world where I'm feeling disconnected? I don't really like myself sometimes. And it's hard to run a business when you're in that space. And so I know you have a new book coming and I, this is why I say, I don't know if we want, we want to go here yet, but your, your new book is called the self-reliant entrepreneur. And I'm, so that's where my, that's where I'm stuck. You caught my face, Michael, in yeah, my yeah, face was stuck there. there, right? But that, yeah, absolutely. And, and yeah, so John kind of, kind of filter in is, is, you know, a lot of times when you, you go through the evolution of somebody's books, it's really the evolution of the author, you know, and it, and it's this, you know, referral flood to duct tape marketing, to referral engine, to the self-reliant entrepreneur. And the self-reliant entrepreneur is a, is a tangent from, from kind of this marketing referral generating business uh, type of, of flow. And so tell us about, tell us about that tangential. And you just, what's interesting is I'm, I'm seeing a, I'm seeing a, 
maybe it's social media, right? To tie that in it is I'm seeing a, a new John Jance, maybe not a new, but maybe just more of, and you just got through hiking uh, the Grand Canyon. Is that correct? Well, actually Yellowstone Park. I, Yellowstone Park. Well, yeah. Why stop at Grand Canyon when you could just to hike a super volcano? Nice work. So you just, you just hike Yellowstone and, uh, and, and I'm guessing there were a lot of reflective moments. Uh, you know, hiking is one of my, my favorite activities. And, and I know how, and the reason I love it is because of how much reflection that I do during that, that trip. And this book almost seems uh, more reflective, you know, in, in nature. So tell us about the self-reliant entrepreneur. Yeah, I mean, you really, you really nailed it. I mean, it is an evolution of, you know, of my kind of body of work. I mean, I'll, this is actually my sixth book. All my other books have been about some you know, pretty close uh, relationship to marketing and, and small business. This book is um, titled The Self-Reliant Entrepreneur. Um, and it's, it's titled, well, first off, I'll give you the format. Um, and on top of being a, a different book for me, topic wise, it's a very different book format wise. It is formatted as a daily inspirational book. So mm. pick up the book, January 1st, here's what you get, January 2nd, January 3rd. Um, what I've done is I've actually dipped back into, there's a body of literature. I'm just a big reader. I, I, you know, I love, uh, literature, even though, you know, my, uh, sophomore and junior year high school <laughs> teachers may not have, uh, recognized that. In the <laughs> Me too. But, um, Hey, listen, you're the ones that made the A and B students possible, Jan, John, I just want you to know that. So <laughs> John Jans. Um, but there's a body of literature in the mid 19th century um, that uh, people have called it different names. It was a romantic period. It was transcendentalist, but it was also a time in America where there was a lot going on. It's kind of the first sort of counterculture uh, period. It's uh, you know, there was a revolt against slavery and the women's movement was starting. We were on the foot doorstep of uh, the civil war, frankly. And so a lot of the literature from authors like Thoreau and Emerson and Melville and Poe and Mark Twain were kind of a reflection of that time and that kind of counterculture. Hey, I can do my own thing. You know, <laughs> I need to be my own person. Um, and so what I've done is I've taken that work and I've taken a reading from that work. Somebody of the work, I mean, there's a couple hundred because I had to have 366. Mm -hmm. So there's a couple hundred entries from different works, uh, men and women uh, of the time. And start each day with a quote or a reading from one of those uh, works. And then I've just taken kind of my 30 years of being in business and, and trying to be a self-reliant entrepreneur uh, during that time and kind of reflected on each day. And then I leave you with a question um, each day uh, as well. And so the book's meant to be something that you put by the bedstand, you know, you pick it up, read for two minutes and think, you know, that, that's something I want to think about uh, today or, or bring, you know, kind of as a, a centering thought uh, to the day. Um, and then, you know, you, you're off and you do whatever it is that you do. But um, there certainly are a lot of things in this. You know, you mentioned the, the, the hiking and outdoor. The Transcendentalists had a really, um, I think, kind of futuristic view of our relationship with nature mm -hmm. uh, and solitude and meditation and, you know, a lot of the things that, that a lot of entrepreneurs today, you know, really kind of treasure and use to, to start their days because, right. you know, You've been doing it for a long time, Michael. I've been doing it for a long time. I mean, this is um, doing the work that we do, even though I love it, it, it is physically and mentally you know, demanding and, and challenging. And so, you know, having things that you can come back that keep you from, you know, because there, there's going to be a lot of people trying to knock you off the rails every day. And so, you know, kind of having these, uh, these tools that you can embrace to kind of bring you back um, is, is, you know, I, I think is an essential part of how you, how you stay joyful in what you're doing. And that's, that's, you know, we talk about fly, which is first love yourself to truly fly in, in business. You need to fly. You need to first love yourself. And it sounds like this book, the self-reliant entrepreneur, it would be a great addition to everyone's morning routine, right? We, uh, I teach, uh, something called 30 mornings and it's about this this morning ritual and morning routine and and you just you pack it full of good stuff with meditation visualization you know exercise reading all the good habits of, of the greats and it sounds like this 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 would it be if somebody's 
not robust at journaling, right. then, then this could really fill that gap for someone that, you know what, I'm just going to read, I'm going to reflect on one question and I'm going to call that my scribbling or journaling time and, and, then, and then rock and roll through, through the day. And, uh, and I, I love that. I love how you broke, that, broke down the book. And of course, I would be the guy that would read all 366 and then start over, you know, on the day of just because I, I want to see how it ends, even though I know that like, it's not even a, it's not even a book that has an ending, you know? So well, it, no, I'll give you the book ends at the beginning. <laughs> that, 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 right. Just like every year, you know, and then, and it's well, a, in it, fact, I, I, if, if you'll indulge me, um, I don't know when people are going to be listening to this, but this is, uh, we're recording this August 23rd. Yeah. Uh, why don't I read today's entry? Yeah, let's see. Yeah, that'd be great. That'd, that'd be, be perfect. Right. So uh, it happens to be, uh, the, the reading uh, happens to come from Mark Twain today. So the, uh, the title of, the, of today, August 23rd, is Radical Humility. Noise proves nothing. Often a hen who has merely laid an egg cackles as if she has laid an asteroid. And that's from Mark Twain, uh, a book that he wrote called Following the Equator. And my reflection on that, <clears throat> here's a common entrepreneurial balancing act. The world needs to know that you're kind of a big deal because the more people will, and I can't read my own writing, because more people will want to buy from you, write about you, work for you, talk about you, invite you. But then that turns into the quote on social media, humbled to be named to the top 1137 entrepreneurs in Poughkeepsie to follow on Twitter status up. We've all seen those, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's not humbled. Humbled is what you get when someone called you out on how ridiculous that post is. <laughs> That's the celebrity seeking times we live in, right? Self-reliant entrepreneurs don't spend time thinking less about themselves. They just spend less time talking about themselves. They spend more time listening, asking for help, testing their theories, praising others, and most importantly, admitting when they are wrong. The Emerson quote gets to the value of humility. Practice radical humility. Those who master the art of humility cannot be humiliated. Self-reliant entrepreneurs can't be humiliated. Today, practice not taking credit for anything. And please, no humble brags on Facebook. Wow. Good job. And what's, what's the question the for the day? I can't wait question for the day what is your definition of humility wow wow lots to think about in there wow that was like yeah a it's not it's it's uh that's awesome you know what it, it so i think we need to talk about like what is the definition of humility you know <laughs> As, especially the more you grow you know the more you work on yourself the more you think of yourself right so to speak and and the thing is is that what's funny is then you reach this level where it's kind of like the quote in there about, you know, it's, it's, it's not necessarily that successful people are uh, selfless. They just think of themselves less, right? And they don't think less of themselves. They think of themselves less, right? And, and that's, I think that's the, the humility is it also, quite honestly, the more you know, the more you really realize you don't know anything. You know, I've read 2000, I, you know, looked at my library of, of 2000 plus business books, read them all, devoured them all. I mean, you know, yours, big part of it, right? But it, it's like, I don't just read. You can see I've even got, you know, from, from 10 years ago, I have a, you know, spot in the book that I refer to. So even with devouring all that, it's just like the more I've learned, the more I've just learned that there's more to learn. You know, it's just like, I don't, I do not uh, know anywhere close to all of it. So I think, uh, you got to be careful that I think humility is when you stop learning. Yeah. I mean, when you start learning, maybe. Yeah. 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 I no, I know, I, know, I know what you're saying. I mean, and that's, yeah. you know, that's the point I was really trying to make too, is that, you know, when you, a lot of, we, we spend a great deal of our time trying to defend our point of view, mm -hmm. trying to make sure people know we're important. <laughs> and yeah. that's, you know, that's, that's sort of the, uh, you know, the practice that, you know, a lot of entrepreneurs go through as they're saying, hey, I've got to make my way. And I think as you become more self-aware of the value that you actually bring, you care so much less about that. Um, and, and there's so much less stress, you know, involved in that. I mean, you know, we've all gone to the networking event where, you know, somebody just basically wants to name drop and make sure that everybody there knows, you know, how important they are. And then we've also seen those people that, you know, don't, 
have to say anything, <laughs> but you know, you clearly realize that they're the wisest person in the room. That's right. Like the, you know, the, the, the owner of uh, Garmin, right. He still lives in a $250,000 house in Kansas city. And, you know, he, he's, he's very humble and unassuming and he's a, he's a billionaire, you know, multi-billionaire. And, and, you know, it's one of those where uh, it's, it, it, it kind of, you know, what's funny is I don't get called humble very often, which is interesting. Uh, very, it's probably true too, you know, calling, but it was funny. We did our podcast, you know, we were coming up over a year. And when we did the first podcast, it wasn't like, Hey, we're doing a podcast and here we go. It could have been the Michael J. Mayer podcast. It could have been, you know, there are podcasts that are named after characters, but, but in fact, we went through, does the world need another podcast? Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, my uh, Mandy Thacker, who is my director of operations, just kind of afterwards, she was just like, I love how humble you are. You know, I, I love that, you know, you didn't call it Michael Mayer podcast, you know, even though we said that you should call it the Michael Mayer podcast so people can find you. And, and then your first podcast was totally like, why is this going to be different? And does the world really need another, another podcast? And, and there was a lot of humility in that. And honestly, that's, that's the, that's the power of it too. Right. Well, I, I've had my podcasts now for over a decade. And, you know, to this day, I still tell people, um, one of the greatest values of a podcast is that, you know, I get to talk to people I want to talk to, yeah. <laughs> you know, and it really is a, so having this, this kind of conversation, I hope there are millions of people listening, um, you know, but, uh, you know, the, the value of it, as far as I'm concerned, you know, at least initially, is that I get to have a great conversation with you. Yeah. Joe, when you think about, um, so with this new book, when you think about the legacy of a book, um, what, like, what impact do you want the self-reliant entrepreneur to have? When you look out into the future, what impact do you want it to have? You know, I, I'm, my hope is that I know because I talk to a lot of entrepreneurs who struggle with a lot of self-doubt, a lot of self-trust. There's a lot of, you know, people in their ear. Some of them, you know, live there, but mm -hmm. <laughs> some of them are also, you know, people that, uh, that come up to them and tell them how stupid their idea is or that mm -hmm. they shouldn't do this or that they're not good enough to do X. And so part of my hope is that this becomes a little bit of kind of like a safe place to go and say, you know what, I, I need to follow my truth. You know, I, mm -hmm. maybe I don't need to make as much money. Maybe I, you know, maybe stick into my guns and I'll make a lot more money, you know, but just to, just for them to say, look, I'm going to do my thing. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to know why I'm doing it, but I'm not going to let anybody knock me off the course. It doesn't mean I'm not going to change my mind if, you know, if I realize I'm wrong, but I'm going to stick to my guns and, and stay uh, self-reliant and, and kind of understand, you know, what that means. Now, I also hope that it helps somebody who, who is thinking about starting a business. Um, you know, frankly, uh, this is called the self-reliant entrepreneur. This could be called the self-reliant person, the self-reliant mm -hmm. man or woman, you know, right, because yeah. it doesn't really matter what you're doing. I think we all uh, will have more joyful lives if we trust ourselves a little more. So if I tied that back into the conversation of referrals, I feel like um, you had said earlier, John, like if you want more referrals, be referable. And I think the world is hungry for um, depth and meaning and real conversation. And I think as you know, I can totally see myself going through your book every day and accessing new thoughts that I hadn't thought before and sharing that with others that inspires them to think about thoughts they hadn't thought before. And I think when you can lead a conversation like that with your army of ambassadors, all of a sudden you're, you're not just looked at as the realtor, but you're looked at the person as the person who thinks deeply in dr of life and drinks deeply from good books, do you know? Yeah. And I, and I think you make a great point. I mean, I think, I think the people who win in life, you know, help people get what they ultimately want. Uh, yep. And, you know, oh, and by the way, you know, I happen to be a real estate agent, um, but helping somebody right. get what it is that they want is what makes you so referable um, and exceptional and, and why they want you in their life. And so right. whatever avenue that takes, um, it generally speaking, um, it comes off as, as really so authentic and so caring, uh, yep. that, you know, that makes you the obvious choice in a lot of cases. And it, and it also ties into this, what you discovered. So, so that with this book, it, it, it's a good thoughts lead to good habits, lead to good conversations with good people. Mm -hmm. And, and that's, that's where like the morning ritual, I talk about meditation and journaling and, and, 
uh, visualization. Uh, the thing is, is, is that when you're, when you're, when you're sitting there, you're talking to another person, the most successful tend to have one, of, one or more of these habits. One of those habits is, is reading and having time to stop and think in the morning, hopefully. But what I've discovered is that like with meditation, meditation turned into one of the biggest referrals I've ever gotten in my life. The conversation started around meditation and we built rapport and like-mindedness around meditation, which led to, and listen, infancy in meditation, especially at that time, but it led to a, a, a huge opportunity. So it's like that good thought led to a good habit, led to a, and I would even say great, great thoughts, which is what self-reliant entrepreneur is going to spark, is going to lead to great habits that lead to great conversations yep. with great people. And great people are who you want to refer you because what happens when a great person refers you is whoever they refer works with you. Whereas if you get someone who somebody might esteem as egotistic or, or, or uh, weak or unsuccessful, they refer you, then it's probably not even going to end up a piece of business or, or somebody that you can help because of who referred you versus when great people refer you, they just work with you. It's the easiest. There is no sales process to that whatsoever. It's just a service process. Mm -hmm. So I think it definitely feeds into that. One of the kind of core tenets of, of the transcendentalists at that time, you know, a lot of the writers that were considered that, um, and this starts to get, you know, verges on being a little spiritual, yeah. but, um, uh, you know, they really felt that we were all connected. We were connected to nature. We were all connected to each other, you know, in this big, you know, pot of soup. And I, and I think that I believe firmly that that is true. Yeah. Um, and Have you seen Avatar? That, you know, oh, Have yeah, you seen yeah. Avatar, the movie? We are. I mean, if you watch that movie, we're all connected, literally. So, but, but I mean, and they're, you know, they weren't the first ones to create that idea. I mean, it comes yeah. from ancient East, you know, Eastern, you know, spiritual text. But, you know, if you think about this idea of referrals, I mean, that's really what we're talking about is this giant connection yeah. of, you know, how we, you know, use our, what it is we have our gifts or our thoughts or, you know, our actions to, you know, to benefit each other because it benefits us. And if we're, if we know we're connected, we'll never burn the bridge. We'll never like have that anger burn a relationship and we won't, a, a, a great example we just had is I had, there was a competing coach in baseball who, you know, he was a, ultra competitive and uh, I'm, I was just, I mean, in baseball, right? It's freaking baseball. In the scheme of life, it's baseball, but I was helping him. I actually helped place four players on his team and I never burned a bridge. I was just like, I'm, I'm going to just continue to build a relationship like that incident never happened. And Lo and behold, yesterday we get notification that practice times on a field are not going to work, right? It's just 515 in Atlanta is not a very good time to practice because nobody's going to get there at 515. So guess what? I called on this other coach and said, hey, listen, you know, do you have spare practice time that, that might work? Well, it worked out. He had a great practice time for our team. And the thing is, is so what, what was the seed – that led to this, this working out for everyone is this thought of connectivity and the fact that, you know what, is I'm never going to burn a bridge. No matter how rude they are to me, I'm never going to be rude to somebody else. And, and it just, it was just one of those where it's like, I just continued to build a relationship and, and I'm not saying I'm great or anything like that, but the thought that we're talking about here of, Oh, just know, like, Every relationship is always going to come back around every relationship and that, you know what it does. And, it, and it's amazing how often and how fast the rewards come from just treating everyone like with dignity and respect and love and that we are brothers and sisters in this, in this world. And it's funny, you know, I, you probably get this all the time. I know I do when people talk about referrals, should I pay for them? Do, how do I keep score? And, you know, that, that comes up all the time. And, you know, I always just say, hey, look, the universe has an amazing scorekeeping system. You know, mm -hmm. don't worry about it. You know, I mean, obviously there are places, times when, you know, that doesn't make sense, you know, because of a relationship, the way it works. But don't worry about it. Give, 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 and you'll receive. Amazing. I love it. So <laughs> true. John, so true. when is the Self-Reliant Entrepreneur um, available? Sure. So it depends upon when people are uh, listening.
watching this, it will be October of 2019. Oh, nice. So at uh, after that point, October 22nd, uh, officially, of 2019. And uh, of course, it'll be available in, uh, in uh, you know, digital formats and uh, audiobook and, uh, of course, available at all the, all the places people find books today. Yeah. Most absolutely. likely they'll be listening in October. So this is perfect timing. So get that book today or as soon as possible. And uh, it's called The Self-Reliant Entrepreneur by John Jantz. And uh, it is a daily reflection and it will help uh, you and everybody you know. It, 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 we talk a lot about, you know, hey, listen, when you, when you meet with people, it's, it's, it's always great, even before you know them, uh, to, to have a gift of some sort. And I'm not saying that's why you do anything. It's just like, you know what, I think this will help your life. Mm-hmm. And the self-reliant entrepreneur might be one of those just really great, um, you meet with people, you have two of them, one for yourself, and, and you happen to give one away. And uh, they're, they're going to thank you later for, for that uh, contribution. Yeah, so good. John, if people want to connect with you in the interwebs of the world, how do people find you or connect to the work you're doing? The easiest way is just duct tape marketing.com. So D U C T. T-A-P-E marketing.com. Pretty much everything I do is uh, at least an offshoot of, of something there. So you can find all you know the books and my podcast and whatever it is that you want to dive into marketing wise. It's yes. duct tape marketing podcast, correct? Yes, that's right. Okay. Yeah. And uh, it's not, you don't have referral flood.com. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I still own it, of course. <laughs> of course, because you're course. a great marketer, right? <laughs> and, awesome. uh, that's awesome. And I will tell you that we just wrapped up a great conversation with Stacy Brown Randall. Stacy Randall, uh, who wrote uh, Generating Business, uh, re- Generating re- Business Referrals Without Asking for Referrals. And uh, she actually said that the referral engine and 7L uh, were kind of the two books that had the biggest impact on on her and her getting into this this referral world. And uh, it was just it was uh, she was very complimentary of you. And and just know you're you're kind of in, in this legacy mode, you know. And um, you're too young for that, first of all. Uh, but but second of all is just know. I mean, you've impacted me and Stacy at a very high level. And uh, we've done pretty well with that. And, and just, I think it's one of those where it's like, I, I feel the need to, to not just end this podcast with a thank you for being on the podcast, but, but seriously having me express my appreciation from the bottom of my heart for the impact that you, you've had on me and, and my business and, and the people that I impact because, uh, uh, like I said, I, I'm not going to give you sole responsibility because that would just be too great of a responsibility. You would not want that responsibility. <laughs> but the the nice thing is is that uh, you were a, you were a part of my growth in a in a very big way. So thank you. Well, that that's very kind of you. I mean, as hopefully anybody would say, I mean, no nobody gets any measure of success without a lot of help. Um, and mm. so, you know, that that's that's hopefully you know hopefully I you know, have given that same sort of, uh, you know, credit to anybody that's helped me along the way. But, you know, that it is, it is amazing. I think <clears throat> the second you start to think, you know, you're, you're somebody really big. I mean, I think you really need to appreciate that there were thousands of people that, you know, unseen in many cases, you know, that certainly uh, deserve a lot of the credit. So good. What a great episode. Thank you, John, for being on the show. Michael, thank you for inviting John. What a great, what a great episode. Um, gentlemen, thank you so much. John, uh, John, congratulations on your new book. I look forward to reading that. Um, and until we see you next time, Michael, take care. Thank you.